I think we, you and me, have an unhealthy relationship with task management. I think there's a better system for it. I think there's a better tool for it. And I think there's a better mindset for it. And that is exactly what we're gonna be addressing in this video, so stick around. Hey, welcome to Lead Loud. My name is Richard Mulholland. I'm the founder and chief evangelist of Presentation Powerhouse Missing Link. If you need some training, you wanna level up, definitely give us a shout. Now, one question that I wanna address this week is a simple one is this. What is the best to-do list or task manager? Because let me tell you, I have tried a plethora. What is this? A plethora of amigos? <laughs> I've tried a plethora of these apps. You know, as a speaker, constantly going on tours, trying to get my content going in place. Like I want to have good systems to make sure things aren't forgotten. The problem is that I find that these things tend to act as a bit of a middleman. They're, they're not solving a real purpose. And this comes down to one core idea that I want to share with you. And that is this, there is no task management. There's just time management. There's no task management. There's just time management. Right? You need to understand this. If you understand that you're not managing tasks, all that happens is at some point in the future, you have to spend time doing something. So it's not a task play. It's a time play. Now, we talk about that and then we write down these tasks. I've kind of spoken about writing things down before. In fact, I often, you know, I'm quite obsessed with the idea of making notes and things. In fact, that's why I've created a, a video on idea traps. You definitely think you should maybe check that out. I'll make sure I link down below and, and please do watch that. And let me know what you think. I remembered reading this recently, this, this note that kind of landed for me such a great concept about why we make notes. And he said, we don't write down things to remember, we write them down to allow us to forget. Because when I have something I'm holding in my brain, I like it's, it's something that I'm, you know, I have to think about and use cognitive load for. But once I've written it down and tagged it in one of those great apps, you know, there, I think Roman Workflowy and things like that are, are you know, brilliant. But then what happens is a future version of me can search for that very, very easy and find that idea. But I think that that's what we have to understand when it comes to task management, because that's all we're kind of doing is we're writing them down now in this uh, task manager or whatever the case may be. And it's in order to forget it for now so that you know it will get done. But to kind of play on that earlier concept, for me, a task you have to do is simply time that you have to spend. That's all it is. It's just a unit of time. Uh, it's a statement of future intent, a contract that you're making with yourself at some point in the future to get done. And I think that's a flawed way of thinking because for me personally, if I like ever have one of these to-do lists with like lots of stuff to get done, it is anxiety inducing. Like there's just so much stuff. I don't want to have to deal with it. So what's happened is when I get to that past me or, you know, a previous version was a bit of an asshole and has given me all this work to do. And I've got to deal with this. And I look at it all and I think like, geez, that's, that's like a lot. And so it gives me stress. That's why we try to find, I guess, better systems for managing these that give times and dates and prioritization. And what I want to share with you is one that I found today that is cross-platform. It is collaborative. It has a zero learning curve. It's hundred percent free. And I actually believe that it makes it more likely for you to get things done. Also, best news ever, you have it already. It's completely, fully uh, multi-platform and you have it already. Before I share with you what the app is, I wanna share a concept that I've hinted at already in this video. So the way I see it is I understand it that we have uh, three versions of ourselves, a past version, a present version, and a future version. And for me, my job today is simply always to deal with the crap that past me did and to curate a better experience for future me. So I want future me to have a better experience because I'm taking some of the load for them now. It is an act of service when I work a little bit late to get something done. One example I always share with people is like old me, <laughs> past me, used to come home like if I was going for a or training late in the evening or doing something, I would take off my shoes and I just wouldn't untie the shoelaces. And then what happened at like five in the morning when I woke up to work out and I was like trying to quietly move through the house and get to my running shoes, maybe even from the day before training I just kicked off. And then I was just thinking like, ah, oh, you're such an asshole. Why didn't you untie the laces then? Because that's what curating an experience is. In fact, even in this video on Sunday night, it was Mother's Day here. And I went out with my mom and my family for, you know, uh, Mother's Day and it was amazing. I love you, mom. And you know, and it was a beautiful day. And then I got home and I thought, well, instead of trying to stress on this on Monday, let me take uh, a couple of hours to work through and to plot the script for this video. And I did it because I knew that I wanted to have a, a, a chance 
later not to add stress for myself in the next day. I mean, I remember back when I was a waiter, I would always make sure that my station was left super, super clean. So when the next waiter came in the next day or at the next shift, they didn't have to deal with it. I wanted to be that guy. And if we can do that for other humans, why wouldn't we do it for other humans that are us? And I think that's what we must do. And that's the flaw of any one of these systems in general is that they're just basically creating a list, combining a list that somebody else has to deal with. It's basically leaving the end of your shift with a note of things that the person who takes over from you has to do. I think it's a flaw and I think we need a better system. But so let's go back to that idea I shared with you earlier then. That idea that it's a, a task you have to do is simply time you have to spend. In that case, of course, there's a time issue. Now, but we have a tool for handling time. That tool is your calendar. It already exists for that. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the app. We have a calendar, but we don't think about it the right way. I was watching a video the other day, one of these productivity videos, and the guy was saying, you know, thanks to the iPad split view, I can actually put my task manager on one side and I can actually have a split view and I've saved this as a state, which is a great life hack that has my calendar here. Bro, why? Why are you doing that? Like. I just don't understand. You have a calendar that you can schedule the actual time it takes. It's so easy for me. All I want you to do is take a moment. Every time you think about something you have to do, take a moment, go into your calendar, work out how long does this need to do and book that time slot, right? You can just do that. It is so easy. We just need to have a new mindset around what our calendar does. For some reason, like we think it's just for meetings, but it's not, it's for managing all of your time. Every time from uh, when I see people with empty slots in their calendar, I can't understand it because for me, everything, my craft hour, my creative work, my prep time for these things, everything I have to do, including sometimes small little blocks that are for, you know, miscellaneous tasks that I just drop a few little things that I want to get to during the day. They all exist in my calendar. And what that also does is it stops other humans from interrupting my time because that slot is taken. So we need to have a better sense of what it is we wanna do. You know, I have a lot of speaking tours coming up and things, I need to plan a system for it. And I would have so much stress if I had to be working on this tour that I'm doing quite now, it's quite a big one in multiple countries and things. But I'm not stressed because I've taken the time to plan out what I need to do and I just know it's kind of like that idea. You know that idea I mentioned earlier that you know we write things down to allow ourselves to forget them. If you write down tasks, you're not allowing yourself to forget them. You're, you're creating anxiety. But if you schedule or schedule or schedule schedule, <laughs> let me know down below. Sched, shed. Hmm. If you plan and plot the time frame already, then I don't have to think about it. So when I think about this tour, so I'm gonna to be in Santorini next month, and I think about like, I've gotta prepare a talk for it, and I'm doing a whole bunch of slots. If I have allowed myself, I know that I've allowed myself time to plan for that. I'm not stressed because I know that the time has been allocated for it, so I don't have to worry about that at all. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to go into your calendar, and I want you to create a recurring meeting on a Monday, I happen to use uh, Google Calendar to run my calendar. I want you to create a running uh, task. You can do it in any app. And it's basically week prep. And it starts whenever it is before you start your morning. And sometimes I will open this task on a Sunday. I'll check, see if there's anything in there. If I do need to put something for next week that I'm not sure I want to schedule yet, it's not urgent enough to do, I may drop them in the notes there. And then what happens is I sit there in the Monday morning. I happen to do it with my assistant, but you don't have to, you can do it by yourself. In fact, I think that, you know, uh, this is one of these ones that works even better by yourself. And then what I do is I sit there and I plot these out and I make new little meetings, uh, you know, in order to do it. And one of the cool things, I don't know if you know, that when you say create a meeting in Google, you can actually just create a task. Now it does have a fixed time period of like 15 minutes, which isn't ideal because sometimes I want to do tasks that are an hour and a half, you know, do deep work on a presentation. But actually one of the cool things it has as well is focus time. And you can actually schedule focus time, which is a longer draggable period of time. And it will make sure that people don't interrupt you and everything in there. It's a cool function that I think a lot of people don't think about. However, you can also just use the task thing if you want there. One of the rules that I have is all of my tasks are a different color. And by the way, the cool thing about using the task function or even creating a different calendar in Google is that then what you can just do at any given time, the ta if you use the task function, then what it can do, although they are slotted into your calendar at the right points, 
all you have to do is you can actually view at the top and it'll tell you how many pending tasks you have in order to make it, uh, you know, to see it. But I make them a different color or some people I know actually use them as a different one. They've added another calendar to their system so they can turn off their meetings and then they can just see their tasks, shift into one of those views where you see them one after each other and you've got a time relevant, sorted, prioritized by time task list. It's amazing. The one thing I will say, the one flaw is that we generally don't go back in our calendar and sometimes life happens. Now, if you're using Google's task functions, it's no problem because if you didn't check it off, it will actually exist in your pending tasks still to be done. However, I tend to just actually at the end of the day, go through and simply just plot what it is I want to do. I have a reflection session at the end of every day. I do about a review. I look through my tasks and any I've not done, I will drag across. My rule is if it's less than 10 minutes to do it, and this should always be a rule. In fact, anytime you can, if there's a task, I think this is one of the core GTD getting, getting things done principles was if you can do it in five minutes, just do it. Don't put it off. Occasionally it's just not worth breaking my flow for. So I'll, I'll send a note. I actually did a video on brain toss, a really great app that we linked up to below that you can do. Send myself a quick email, fires it off. It's in my inbox. When I'm doing my inbox zero task, I add the task in for when I want to do it. If it's not urgent, you know, there, but generally at the end of the day, if I've missed something, I, my question I ask myself is, can I do this now? If the answer is yes, I do it. If the answer is no, then I will just drag that and find a better slot. One other principle I want to share with you, and I know this video is going longer than usual, but I think it's important. I think it will save you a lot of time, uh, ironically, in the future. Is that one of my favorite quotes is a quote by a guy called Duke Ellington. He said, I don't need time. What I need is a deadline. And I tend to be very, very much like that. Like I have deadlines for things. When I'm preparing a talk, for example, so I mentioned the Santorini. Now, before that, I'm in Boston and I've got that one is more urgent, that talk to prepare for, for than the Santorini one. So I don't even have the headspace to think about it. So what I do is I plot my Santorini planning actually for when I'm in the US doing the other talk. And then I plot that talk before now that I have to get to. I have found that if I put a task too early, too close to or far away from its deadline, I tend to then just skip over it and use the time for something else. So I've trained myself to actually only start planning the time at the point in which a degree of urgency where Duke Ellington is telling me, bro, you got to move and then I make it happen. So what is the call to action for this one? Well, it's very, very simple. What I want to do is I want to ask you to give it a try to use your calendar as a time management app and to change your mindset from task management to time management. Everything that needs to be done must be allocated time in your calendar. If it is not in your calendar, you have not, you are not spending the time you need to make it happen. That is a core idea. So just go set that weekly prep on a Monday morning, drag it, try it next week and try and plot your time. If during the course of the day, things happen before Monday, just drop them in, schedule them straight away, schedule them straight away. Huh? Am I right? Am I right? Am I right? And then in fact, add another one, add a note in this one. It says, give me feedback, put it for two weeks time. Let me know the feedback. One other task that I guess I could ask you to do as well <laughs> is like this video, maybe subscribe, maybe share it with a friend. But most importantly, I want you to try it. And I want to change your mindset around this thing because ladies and gentlemen, there is no task management. There's just time management. So be better to the future versions of you, manage your time and lead loud.